Alright, hi Year 10s. Today we're doing applications of quadratics. What that means is pretty much a word question. So you'll get a whole bunch of words and you've got to solve the problem. So the key to these is firstly, read the question three times if you have to. You have to understand what it's talking about. And um, there's a few steps here involved, so let's have a look. Copy this down, please. Good job everyone. So, what I try to do when I look at worded problems, the maths is the easy bit, the understanding is the tricky bit with these type of problems. So, read the question lots of times, like we just said, and try to get rid of the words. Turn the words into a maths problem, and then it makes it easy. Then just solve the maths, answer the question. So, let's have a look at the steps. First thing is to find the variable. That means what you're trying to find. Say, let x equal, if it's a side length, write down side length. Let x equal the age of Tom or something. Whatever you're trying to find. Next thing, write an equation. That's where you use the words that you're reading and see if you can write, change, write that into an equation. Solve the equation using our maths. You've got the skills to do that. Now, choose the sensible answers. What that means is sometimes you'll get two answers. You might get something like, x equals minus 3 and x equals 5. Now if they're talking about a side length, negative 3 is not a sensible answer. So you know the answer is 5. So what you do in that case, you don't just cross that out, you give them two answers, you say these are the two answers, and then you discount this one. You say this one is not a sensible answer, so therefore the answer must be 5. And then at the end you answer the question in words. Don't forget to use units. So if it's centimetres, write down five centimetres and answer the question in words. Excellent. That's all you have to do. Let's do some examples. A rectangle has its length three metres more than its width. If its area is 28 metres squared, find the width. Okay, so word of question. If you need to draw a picture, I'm definitely going to draw a nice simple diagram first before I begin. So there's my rectangle. And I'm going to read it again, because I'm not sure, I've kind of forgotten what it said, so I'm going to make sure I've done it right. Its length is 3 metres more than its width. Okay, but I forgot the very first step, to find the variable as well. So while I draw this diagram, my variable, I'm going to say let x equal, and it says find the width. So my x is going to be the width. Excellent. So it says the length is 3 metres more than its width. So the width is x, we just said that. And the length is 3 metres more. So that would be x plus 3. So now I've got my diagram and it says the area is 28 metres squared. So that's the other important bit of information. So, what do we know about the area of a rectangle? The formula, area equals length times width. So I'm going to use this formula and substitute whatever I know for these values. So the area is 28. The length is x plus 3, and the width is x. Alright, so now we have a quadratic equation that we can solve. But remember, I'm just going to rearrange it a little bit. So I'm going to put the x in front of that, so x, x plus 3, because that's the way we'd like to expand it. And I'm going to put the 28 on the other side, equals 28. So I've rearranged the equation and just rearranged the order of that. So what do we have to do now? We have to, remember, the other side is not equal to zero. And you're about to say, well, this is factorised already. Yep, that's true. But the other side is not equal to zero. So what we need to do is expand these brackets. So we get x squared plus 3x and bring the 28 to this side. So I'll do that all in one step. I'll subtract 28 and it equals zero. So now we have a quadratic equation where it equals zero. So what do we do now? Now we factorise again. So x squared, so it's x and x, it's a minus, plus and minus. Now, factors of 28, we know it's 1 and 28, 2 and 14, or 4 sevens. 4 sevens are 28, and that has a difference of 3. So I'm going to make it plus 7 and minus 4, because that will give me, remember when you expand in your brain when you work this out, that'll give us plus 7x, and this one here will give us minus 4x which is plus 3x. Okay, so now we've done that, we use a null factor law. x plus 7 equals 0, so x equals negative 7. And this one, x minus 4 is equal to 0, x equals 4. So we've done all the hard work, we've done the maths, we've got 
x equals negative 7 and x equals 4. Now think about what we've found out. x is the width of the rectangle. Can our width be negative 7 metres? I'm pretty sure that's not correct. So x equals 4 is the right answer. So remember, we answer it in words. So we say the width of the rectangle is 4, and don't forget the, the units, is 4 metres. So you state both answers that you've calculated, and then you say what the actual answer is. If you want to say negative 70 is not a correct answer, it's not a sensible answer, you can do that as well. But that's fine, you get full marks for that. Good job. Let's do another example. The product of two consecutive numbers is 72. Find the numbers by setting up an equation. In class, I always hear kids say, I can do this in my head. But we want to see workings out to get full marks in a test. So yes, you might know what the answer is straight away, but when it's a harder problem, you won't. So that's why you need to know the process. We're teaching you the process, so you can do it, you can apply it to easy questions, but then you can apply it to harder questions as well. So product means times. Two consecutive numbers. Consecutive, that word means one after the other. For example, four and five, they're consecutive numbers. They're one after the other. Okay, find the numbers by setting up an equation. So to find the variables, let x equal smallest number. All right, so if x is my first number, or the smallest number, the next consecutive number, the one after that, one after that would be x plus one because it's one more than x. So there's our first number, and there's our second number. And it says here the product of the two numbers, when we multiply these two numbers together, and put brackets around that, it equals 72. So now we can set up an equation. x times x plus one is equal to 72. So that's how you set up the equation. Similar to the previous one, expand the brackets. So remember how to do that? So you go x squared plus x equals 72. Bring everything to one side. x squared plus x minus 72 equals 0. So now we've got our equation that's equal to 0. We factorise. So you get x and x. 1's a plus, 1's a minus. Um, 9 8's is 72. So we'll make this one plus 9 and minus 8. So I've got my equation and that works because it's plus 9x minus 8x gives me plus 1x. Always good to check that in your brain, just mentally. Now we use the null factor law. x plus 9 equals 0, so x equals negative 9. x minus 8 equals 0, x equals positive 8. So again, we've got two answers. Now, let's have a think about this. Let's start with this one. x equals 8 is a correct answer. So that's our first number, the smallest number. So it says there, find the numbers. So if, the, if 8 is the first number, then the next number must be 9. So let's check in our brain mentally and see if it works. 9 8s, or 8 9s, are 72. So we know that those two numbers are correct. That's right. And you might just look at this one and say, oh, it's a negative number, it's wrong. But let's have a think about it. If the first number is negative 9, what's, one, what's a consecutive number that's greater than that? The next number is negative 8. One more than that is negative 8. What is negative 9 times negative 8? It is positive 72. So there's also, there's a second solution there. These two numbers also work. So to answer this question in words, you say the two numbers are 8 and 9 or negative 8 and negative 9. So that was a bit of a trick question. If you didn't get both sets of answers, you will not get full marks for that question. Alright, and moving on to the last one. Again, it's a, you might want to draw a diagram for it. The area of the triangle is 12 centimetres squared. Its height is 5 centimetres more than its base. Find the length of the base. Let's draw a picture. The length of the base, so let x equal length of the base. It's always a good turn to find the variable so you know what it is that you're finding. Let's draw a diagram. Roughly correct, so there's my right angle triangle. The area of the triangle is 12, its height is 5 centimetres more than its base. So x is, is the base, and the height is x plus 5. Alright, let's see area of a triangle. Area equals base times height divided by 2. Alright, now we 
to substitute the values in, the area is 12 equals the base is x times by the height, which is x plus 5 over 2. So there's our equation, and now all we have to do is simplify it and then solve it. So, first step, times both sides by 2. 24 equals x, x plus 5. I'm just going to do one step at a time. Expand the brackets, so we get 24 equals x squared plus 5x. Bring everything to one side, so the other side is equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 24 to both sides. So I get x squared plus 5x minus 24, and the other side equals 0. And now we have to, now we can factorise. So we do our two brackets, x and x, it's a minus, so one's a plus, one's a minus. Factors are 24. There's lots of different factors, but I'm going to go with 3 8 to 24, because they have a difference of 5. So I'll make that one 8, and that one 5. I'll just quickly check mentally, plus 8x, minus 5x. Oops, sorry. 3 8 to 24, silly. Learn your times tables. Thank you. Thank you, little Johnny in the back, for telling me that. So that's plus 8x minus 3x is plus 5x. Good job. See how I did my mental check then? And I realised that I, I was doing it too quickly and I, I messed up my times tables. So it's always good to check. I'm just going to do it over here now. So x plus 8 equals 0. So x equals negative 8. And x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals positive 3. Okay, now let's have a think about it. X is the length of the base. The length cannot be negative, so that's not the right answer. So this must be my answer. So I'll say the length of the base is 3, and what are the units? Centimetres. Is 3 centimetres, and there's my answer. Good job everyone, well done. Make sure, worded questions, take your time. Read the questions several times before you begin. Define the variables, draw a picture if you need to, write the equation, solve it, answer it in words, look for the sensible answers. Here's your question um, in the exercises, please try those, have fun, and don't forget, smash that like button.